Good morning. Um, we would like more of you to move down front. We feel very lonely up here. Can we get more? Easier to get to the microphone also. This session is Callers Partners During Class. I'm Joanne Mayo. I will be a moderator for this session. I want to thank you all for coming this early in the morning and joining us for what we hope to be an interesting and rewarding session. The people that are on our panel are, I will start by my, my right. First person on the right is Sherry Hag. The next person is Ann McMillan. And to my left is Claris Cross. They will each present a topic of the caller's partners during class. Um, we hope that as you are listening to the presentations, you keep in mind the questions that perhaps are bothering you while you in, are in participating in running your class, whether you run it yourself or whether a club runs it. And pay attention, because I'm sure out there there are lots of problems that have got to be arising. And this is the place to solve them. You don't sit home in your own clubs and not hash them over with anybody. So keep in mind, and let's get some real good questions about college partner during class, their role, what they do, whether they go, whether they stay home. Um, our first person on this panel to present to you her presentation will be Sherry Haig. Uh, I've uh, worked with my husband for about 27 years. Now, I'm not saying that what I've done is right, but uh, we, did, we have always operated our own classes. So they are collar operated rather than uh, club operated. We were also very fortunate in Cheyenne that our hall was in our home. So this helped as far as children were concerned and I didn't have to uh, have a babysitter come in and help there. First of all, when, the, when we did start our classes, my role was kind of to uh, get acquainted with these people, have them all sign up. And usually while the class was open, like for the first three sessions, um, I would have them sign in. Then after that, I usually put the list in an alphabetical order so that I could kind of check through a little bit faster. And uh, by the same token, I collected the money and gave them the little numbers to, to use on the computers to help mix them up real good, get there a little early to make coffee or, or uh, whatever the case is, and, um, and just kind of um, keep a record. Uh, I think by using the, the numbers and, and such, this helped to mix them up and they became acquainted with each other, so they became friends sooner. Uh, also, we had to fill in wherever needed, and sometimes I'm a girl and sometimes I'm a boy. And if I know ahead of time that someone's not going to make it, then I do need to try to find someone from the, the clubs or the, uh, the other dances to come as angels and fill in for us in that respect. Um, in our beginner's class, it was kind of, uh, I try to help familiarize the dancers with the dress code and... Uh, give them a list of things that will make their dancing more enjoyable. And we actually type this out and hand it out to them. We also, if we don't have the little diagrams for them on the basics, then we tell them where they can get them at a nearby square dance shop. At one time we had them available for them right there at the classes. But if we don't have them, then we tell them where they can pick them up. And then a lot of it's just being a good listening block and furnish them information. Uh, if, like in the winter program that we do down in South Texas, when they leave the valley, lots of times they're looking for places to go. So we try to give them uh, callers' names in their area or where they're going to be traveling and recommend that they get right back into uh, basic and mainstream workshop programs so that they can continue through the summer if they have this opportunity. And. I'm sure maybe a lot of you have questions that you can kind of help, and I'll turn this over to the next one, Joanne. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one um, presenting to you her topic is Claris Cross. Good morning. Um, we hail from North Dakota. We live on a farm, and I'm very excited to be here with all of you. Um, our square dancing started out about 25 years ago as a uh, once in a while activity and uh, now most of our leisure time and a good part of our working time is spent on some aspect of this hobby. Um, the, my role during class is varied. 
Uh, first of all, all I want to say that um, the time spent during class to me is probably the most rewarding time of all. Uh, it always thrills me to see a person change from that uh, person that first walks through the door the first night into a, a square dancer that is happy that he or she has chosen this new hobby. Um, it's very exciting to see him progress from the first night up through graduation and, and even after graduation they're still progressing. Um, our class too is caller operated. It's um, the club is behind the, the class. Um, they help in recruiting new prospective new members and they, we always have a square two of angels that, that uh, come and help mix with the uh, new members or a new class and dance with them and make them feel welcome. Um, when I say our classes are caller operated, I mean we set up the schedule and rent the hall and, and uh, do the advertising, furnish the coffee, um, the square dance pamphlets, the name badges, make the coffee, collect the fees. Um, we always begin our class with registration and each night we ask everyone to register and that includes the new members, the new class, the and the angels and this way we can tell by this registration list who has missed which teach and how many times they have missed a class. The first three nights of class are free and it is advertised as such and we always tell them to make up their minds during these first three nights if it's something they want to do. We usually figure if we have them for uh, one or two nights they'll stay. You know, it's they get the excitement and the fun and it, it rubs off and they usually after the first three nights we usually don't lose a couple because they don't like the activity. Uh, probably a health problem arises or something like that. Um, we try not to accept any more new members after the first three nights because it gets repetitious. But of course this rule gets bent sometimes. Um, they always are asked to pay the fee after the third night, the third night or after. And uh, we always stipulate half of the fee must be paid by the third night or the fourth night and after that they make the arrangements with me as far as how they wish to pay it, if they pay all of it or but half must be paid and they can arrange for the rest of it. I do the bookkeeping and the record keeping. Um, and I always think this arrangement of, of the payment with me gives me a chance to early on get to know the new class and to visit with them on a one-to-one -one basis and uh, it not only gives me a chance to know their names and, and addresses but it also gives them a chance to know that that I'm there to help them with any problem that comes up as far as a um, square dance problem or or um, you'll be surprised how often they'll confide in me about a personal problem or a expected new baby heaven forbid <laughs> and all this <laughs> but it, it oftentimes gives me a chance to feel the pulse of a class probably sooner than my caller partner. Um, when it, we're in the process of teaching basics, I always try to watch the floor to see about um, how it's going in the back of the hall. Sometimes it's really hard for, for the caller teacher to see what is happening in the back of a hall if they're persistently breaking down on a basic. Um, I'll call this to his attention and, and uh, have a reteach or probably just a rewording of how it is explained will often clarify it. Uh, we had a, uh, one gal one time said something that really stuck by us and we've kind of used it as a, as a tool you know how a class oftentimes when they make a mistake they get flustered they'll start uh, talking and the more they talk the 
the less they pay attention to what the caller is saying. And this lady came up after a session and she said, you know, when my mouth is in gear, my ears shut off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. You can't talk and listen at the same time. Um, we do a lot of demonstration teaching in our classes, and this is where the angels come in. Uh, if we demonstrate a grand square or a square through before it is taught, it really comes a lot easier. And we also try to add styling points as we teach. And this, we feel, is done much easier if we demonstrate uh, a star through, a curlicue, uh, swing, any of those. We want a, our class to feel as much at ease as possible especially those first few times. So we don't encourage square dance attire or even skirts at first. Um, we feel the period of adjustment into class is so much easier, especially for the younger gals, if they can wear their jeans or slacks. About a third of the way through class, I'll start wearing my square dance uh, dresses, and so will the angels so the class can see the different styles. And then I'll also at that time start bringing my pattern books and patterns and uh, information is made available as to where they can purchase dresses, um, where they can order them and so forth. And this gives them a chance to start thinking about their first square dance outfit. And then about halfway through, we'll have a, a shop come in and display their dresses and uh, petticoats and so forth. It usually takes one time of just looking at the clothing and um, looking at the price tags mm. before they can adjust themselves to actually buying. There will be some buying the first time. And it, as we all know, it takes some adjustment just to get used to thinking about wearing one of those fluffy petticoats. But the second time a shop comes in, they're ready to buy and they've got their ideas formed and, and they really get excited about it. And of course we always encourage them to wear their new outfits as soon as they're ready to. Sometimes a um, couple will have their have two or three outfits by the first oh about the last couple weeks of class, and they'll really just wear them and get used to the big skirts. And sometimes a couple will wear their new outfit for the first time on graduation night, but they're all excited about wearing their new outfits, and they'll they always wear square dance attire after graduation and uh, there just doesn't seem to be any problem. I fully believe the role of a caller's partner during class can be a valuable role not only in with the transition into class but by helping mold a person into a square dancer by example if nothing else. Um, we've noted that classes tend to dance smoothly if they're taught smoothness Courteously, if this is dressed, um, they dress neatly if this is what they see. But also, the partner, caller's partner, can help in the transition of a of a dancer into a good club member. Not only by demonstrating the willingness to help out where needed, but showing the reasons for good attendance and punctuality. Also by proving there's fun and fellowship and good friends in the life they'll find as active square dancers. One of the biggest keys to helping mold an enthusiastic, well-rounded dancer is to keep fun as a theme during class. We always think a square dancer should be able to look back upon the time spent in class as a time that even though he was working hard learning the basics and thoroughly frustrated at times, it's still one of the most rewarding times of all of his square dancing experiences. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just have one question. How many call or run classes do you do each week? We only do the one. You're still very busy. Okay, our next person um, will be Ann McMillan.
Y'all. It's awful hard to be last. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are a caller run class. Our club comes and helps, but we run the class. We ask the club to come and help. Uh, to me, our duties during class begin with open house. Uh, to me, this is a very important part of our square dance program because if we do not present square dancing in a enjoyable or fun way to our new prospective dancers, they won't come back if they don't have a good a good time on that first night. They won't come back. Uh, a lot depends on your club members. What I do is I ask them to stand at the door with me and greet the people um, and smile and be friendly. A lot of them have brought their own friends, so this, this makes it easier on their part. It also makes it easier because they introduce them to me as they come in the door. We ask that our club members dance with our prospective class members at open house, at least for the first few tips. This gives the uh, new dancers a sense of respons uh, responsibility, a sense of assurance, and it gives, they're not so afraid, and they're not so afraid that someone is going to laugh at them. And it also gives the, the members of the club a chance to get to know guests that they did not invite. Okay, I, during open house, I circulate around the floor, and I make sure that no one is left sitting that would like to be dancing. And if they're sitting out because they are afraid that someone will laugh at them or afraid to try, I remind them that everyone there that dances at one time had to go through open house. At one time, we all had to start somewhere. Uh, if the person is a male, I sit with him through the tip and then ask him to be my partner. If the person is a female, after the tip is over, I, de I go and I discreetly ask a male member to please be her partner. And this usually works. But the most important thing we can do at Open House is to welcome these prospective square dancers into our square dance halls as if we were welcoming them into our home. Um, to me, the key word on this night is friendship and fun. On the first night of classes, I begin registration. Uh, Daryl will announce from the stage the fee for the classes, the payment schedule, and the length of the classes. He will then ask that they see me. I'm usually at a table at the entrance. And I find it helpful to carry a teacher's roll book with me. This way I have a place to write their name, addresses, and phone number, a place to mark when they are there each session, and a place to mark how much they have paid. Uh, by keeping check on class attendance each week, we can contact people that have missed a session I usually call and inquire about their health and just try in some way to let them know that we care whether they were there or not. And they return after this, they appreciate it, and they, they return the next week feeling a little more part of the group because someone cared enough to call. If I cannot call, I have a member of our club call for me. We also have to let the new dancers know what is expected of them. On about the second night of classes, we ha hand out a, a little information sheet, and it's entitled Helpful Hints for New Dancers. And then I also hand out a typewritten sheet that explains, uh, let me look at it to see what exactly, I forget what it explains. <laughs> Uh, when the classes start, uh, 
who can take classes, whether we accept singles or not, the age that we will accept, because we do have teenagers in our area that dance, uh, how long the classes will continue, and how much they are, and what do we do when we miss classes. And, and this is and it's very informative for them. And things that they do not understand, I try and explain. Okay. Because our class is held on a club night, our new dancers are exposed to square dance attire from the very start. And I find that by halfway party time that most of the dancers, new dancers, want to be in costume. I inform them about our local square dance attire shops, and I suggest that the ladies' first petticoat and shoes be white, because you can wear white under so many things. Now, we don't do this at our hall, but we have visited halls where they have the club members bring nice, clean, mended, used square dance attire. And it is sold to new dancers at a reduced rate. And I think that's great because when you're first starting out, it's expensive to go buy uh, petticoats and shoes and shirts and everything. And in our area, we have a lot of, of young people with children, and they really, this would be nice. It's, it's my fault that we don't have it, but it would be nice if we would start something like that. It's important to get your new dancers involved with the club as soon as possible. We encourage the class members to stay through our club dance and go out for refreshments with the club after. Uh, after the halfway party, Daryl usually includes the class in at least the first two tips of the club dance. We find this helps them begin to feel more intermingled with the club members and can sometimes help the dropout situation. Another thing that we have found to be very successful in our area is we have Sunday cookouts combined with the square dance for the class members and the club members. Everyone brings their hamburgers and whatever they would like to drink, uh, soft drinks, and we dance some for the class and some for the club, and they intermingle. And around 5 o'clock, we grill hamburgers. And this, this is really, it helps the people that have, the class people that have missed a session or so. It helps them have extra dance time, and it helps the people that maybe aren't quite as, as quick to catch on. It, it gives them a few hours of extra dance time. We don't do it every Sunday. We do it maybe... We, we run our class in 10-week sessions. Maybe we do it one each 10 weeks, and we find this very helpful. One of the most important things that we can do to our class is make yourself available. Circulate among them. Talk to them and be friendly. Learn their names. Remember that you are acting as a liaison between the class and your caller. Uh, be willing to act as a partner when needed. If you see someone having a difficult time, talk to them after the tip is over and give them encouragement. Let them know they're not the only couple on the floor that are having problems. And try to give your new dancers a positive feeling about themselves. And I guess my words to sum up what to do during classes would be smile, be yourself, and be friendly. Thank you, Ann. I have one question. Go ahead. In your beginner class, do you wear square dance clothes from the very beginning? Yes, because it's on a dance night. Okay, thank you. Okay, at this point, we're open for a discussion from the floor. You surely should have lots of questions. Joanne, ma'am, yeah. we Go don't, ahead. we do not ask that our class members. Fine. Okay, I met, I met you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, when you... Uh, present your questions as she's doing. Please come to the microphone because it is being on tape and they do want to hear what the questions are going to be. You can direct them to anybody on the panel or anybody in the audience that has an idea that may feed into a question that's being asked. Please come forward because that way we can get a good discussion going. Yes. Yvonne Clendenin from Oregon. 
Uh, and on your information sheet, do you put something, uh, suggestions for what the new people should be wearing to classes? Yes. Uh, we suggest casual attire. Uh, long sleeve shirts for men, comfortable shoes, slacks or dresses or skirts for the ladies. Okay, there's another question I have for anybody. Or what do you do as far as teaching etiquette? I think this can, pre can be a problem. Uh, if you teach etiquette early in classes, a lot of times they don't really hear what you've told them. And I've gotten comments from dancers. What are you going to do about these dancers that walk through a square and leave a square? Do you have some answers for this? I can tell you our experience. We talk about this at first. We talk about it at different times during the whole class period. We encourage people to to jump in the first square that has an opening or better yet be the first one on the floor so you don't have that problem. Let other dancers join you. Uh, but we also say that it, there are times when you want to dance with your friends. And if you want your square to set up once a night with your friends, do so, but do so at a, a discreet manner. Just uh, get it arranged beforehand and, and set up your square together. Just move out on the floor and set up a square together. Uh, part of being in the square dancing activity is sharing it with your friends. And if you want to set up one square a night with your friends, we think this is all right. Um, I think that this is something that does have to be, re they have to be reminded of it more than once. Like I mentioned, we have this list, and I thought I had one with me, which I find I didn't bring. But about the second time, Jerry will go through, it, it even involves things like foo-foo powder. You know, I mean, most of you have probably run into problems where maybe you have a dancer that has a uh, fielder problem. So we, you'll read through this list, and then we'll have the, sh the copies of them, and it's, it says, um, I think it's 20 basic ideas for your square dance enjoyment or so that you'll enjoy it more for yourself. So then uh, maybe again, three quarters through the way, we have to go through it again. But I do have these lists out. They're out there all the time. And not only in just beginners. We find that this needs to be reminded to your plus two dancers and your advance. They forget these rules too. Excuse me. Erna was standing before you. You'll be next. On um, square dance attire for classes, I am a firm believer that I should wear square dance attire from day one. Uh, and also any angels that are there, we ask them to please come in square dance clothes or they do not dance. They may come in if they come to bring something to us and sit in a corner, but they do not dance at all if they are not in square dance attire. I've had people say um, this frightens off new dancers when they see all those fancy clothes. I really don't think it has to if you don't wear your fanciest dresses, but a simple skirt and blouse and not your fullest petticoat maybe, but always in square dance attire from the beginning. I wouldn't go bowling in a square dance dress. By the same token, I won't go square dancing in slacks. Thank you. I'm Eleanor Rowland from Tacoma, and I agree with her. Um, matter of fact, my husband says the third night, the last night, because he has problems seeing the difference between men and women with slacks on. He said it's too hard. But uh, they do enjoy it more. But it, we use a computer with the numbers, and we find we let them dance the first square where they want to and the last square. And from then on, they just go to their squares. And in class, it has saved a lot of problems. We've had cliques that wouldn't dance. You know, the good dancers get together, and they would dance the whole time. So we find that's a very valuable tool. And if you haven't tried it, do. You use yeah. the number system right from the beginning? You well, right no, not court? the first night. And... Uh, Maybe not even the second night, but the third night, definitely. We do, right from the very first. Oh, well, the first night was kind of party night. You know, they come in and they dance. But, but that way they get acquainted. They really yeah, that's meet true. everybody right off the bat and find they really have a lot of friends. 
Right. And our hall isn't big enough that if our angels come, the first night we have a potluck and all the clubs, both clubs come. And so he usually gets just a new dancer, <clears throat> excuse me, because it gets so crowded they get frustrated. And then after a while, then they dance together, you know, after. But the first time they get on the floor, they're just class. Angie Taylor, Naperville, Illinois. <clears throat> I have a question, and anyone can answer it that wants to. When you ha- are starting your beginner's class, <clears throat> and you have maybe 10, 15, 20 people that are single, and maybe all of one sex, how do you handle it? Who would like to try that one? <laughs> Angie, we because we have single people uh, and mostly they are women we tell them that they have to supply their own partner or we can't give them lessons it it sounds tacky but our club does accept singles but then you can't expect your club members or our wives of our club members to give their husbands up. So we just tell them, either you supply your own partner or we're sorry. We do it in a nice way, but you do. On our information sheet that we hand out on open house night, we say you must have your own partner. Can I ask another question? Sure, go ahead. When they come, you know, we, we run our classes for a year, from one year to the next. And when the other classes finish, we do get some of the people that want to continue and get some summer dancing. When they come from another class, they, some of the clubs and some of the other classes have angeled these people all the time, and they feel a little put out that we are not providing partners for them. And I just feel it's, it's getting to be more and more of a problem because there are more singles, and you hate to discourage them, But I just really feel it's getting to be a bigger problem than we can handle. Because the other clubs are doing this. Well, naturally, in the Valley, we run into a lot of singles, um, primarily women. But uh, I try to get their names, and if I do have men, I try to get their names, and I let them and an address or where Mm -hmm. where they can get in touch with each other. But as a general rule... I try to let them contact each other because I just, I don't have the time really to run them down. All right. Thank you. Uh, Sherry, one question. Do you allow those singles to even begin the class or do you just give them the name and address to (coughs) contact the person to see if they're available to come to classes with them? Well, they're welcome to come, Mm -hmm. but we don't charge them unless there's a partner there for them to dance to it. Oh, I was going to add the the singles... (coughs) don't seem to be the problem in class as they are after class. In class, you have angels to help dance with them, but after class, when they get to dancing, uh, the angels have partners, (laughs) usually, and they want to dance with their own partners and friends, and, and the singles, unless they get paired up somehow, don't get the dancing they deserve. Anybody else have any input into that problem? Okay, why don't you go? <laughs> I'm Marcy Yoder from Oregon. Um, <clears throat> one of the excuse me, one of the round dance leaders in our area had a catchy little thing for the singles, um, and our club is a couples club, but we do accept singles in our class. And on her advertisement, she put "singles welcome, partners required," and it was catchy, you know, and uh, to the point. My question was to uh, Sherry, would you please explain the numbers system? (laughs) Okay. I'm sure there are several of them out, and we've even used a variety of them, but for the past few years, we've been using a system called the Ballard system. It was devised by Art Ballard back in Peabody, Massachusetts, and um, it's um, large boards that go up to 20 squares. You can have up to 20 squares of dancers. In fact, we use it so much that we have it, we can divide our hall into three sections, so you can go 60 squares. 
because we use it from right from the very beginning and we use it even for our dances. Um, when the dancers come in the door, you give them a number and then now we leave open tips so people can dance with their friends too. But it's an excellent mixer. It really is good. We find the dancers say they feel more relaxed. They don't run into situations where they've hurt their friends' feelings because they were supposed to dance with so-and-so and something happened and they didn't get squared up with them. So it, um, it just works real good. They take this number and they compare it to a chart that we post up on the stage. And that shows what square they're in. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Yeah. It'll work with two up to 20 on each system that you... Mm -hmm. Oh, no. If they want to rest, and especially like in a retirement area, well, you'd run into this everywhere. Uh, we explain to them that if they want to sit out, let us know. And then you have uh, a way that you can block different ones out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They rotate around. They never, it depends on the size of your crowd, but more than likely they'll never dance with the same people twice. So it's just really a mixer. Right. Pardon? Okay. How you rotate in the the squares, if that's your question? But see, they are given a number when they come in the door. So uh, for an example, like say you're couple number four that comes in the door and you're given couple, you're given that number. Every, between every tip, you look at the board and that's the rotation process right there. It, it's a different square. And it rotates you. I'm Chris Sweet from Wisconsin. We've heard from three people who represent car run classes. I'd like to hear from someone whose classes run their their beginners classes. Maybe we have somebody out there that does. Yes. Um, what I meant was that the clubs run the beginners classes. You wanted to know if, could you repeat the question again, please? I would like to hear from some people whose clubs run the beginner's classes rather than the caller. Okay. Um, you do we have? okay, I guess I will start with that. The rest of these people are all caller run classes. In our area in New England, all of our classes are run by clubs. They do all the promotion. They do all the recruiting. They get the hall. They do all of the work. And the caller goes in and handles the classes on an agreement by the club, set ahead of time, by how many weeks and uh, the hours that it's going to start. They handle all the refreshments. Um, they bring in their angels. So the, a club run class is fairly easy. You still have an obligation of the partner to give these people the, the expertise that you've received by being out in the square dance world and I think it's easier if the caller's partner does this because dancers, angels, the people running the class have had some experience but not the same experience as a caller's partner has had in various things and they will use the caller's partner if you let it be known as much as a sounding board as the uh, caller run class who partner is interacting more and um, that's how we do it in our area anybody else have any suggestion how they do that I'm Pat Walker from Seattle and both of our clubs are uh, run by the clubs and we start out with a beginner night, with a sort of a party night, and have the club members before this, they give demonstrations, 
all over town in shopping areas and whatnot. They pass out flyers. But on these flyers that they give out and also to their little cards that they give to their friends, they tell them what dress attire to wear and if they have to have a partner. And we do require that because it's a, both clubs are couple clubs, not single clubs. So if they want to come, they must furnish their own uh, partner. But the club does all of the work. They sign them in. They take their names, and they also sign in all the club members that come in and help. And I run around the floor trying to see that this one is dancing with that one. We don't have any set way of mixing them up, except my husband does that. He will look out on the floor, and he'll see a couple X maybe not dancing as well as couple Y, and he'll throw in a small mixer. Maybe it'll be just in a circle where we'll do a right and left grand and meet number five and then form your squares or something like that. And that mixes them up that way. Or he may come up with some other idea. But he also is one that on the third night will give them the basic rules of square dancing, of what to wear, what not to wear, what uh, fellas choose and things like that. Uh, to use deodorant, not to go out and have a great big garlic dinner the night of class. And he makes it sort of a fun speech during their intermission and coffee time. So that by the time that he gets through with it, they're laughing at him, but then he wants it that because it sinks in a little bit better. And we haven't had really any trouble with anybody coming drinking or having any problems that way. But he does mix them up, and even at the dances, um, he has one little gimmick that might pass on up on our round dance board where we have our round dances. He puts a little star, and that is for the club members. And when they see that star, they know that they're not supposed to dance with their own partner. They're supposed to go find a guest someplace and dance with them. Thank you. Irene Roth from Mandan, North Dakota. We have uh, teach for two or club run classes, but they pretty much give us a um, run of what you know what's going to be taught. Uh, they do all the uh, renting of the hall, making the lunch arrangements. They arrange for the class to help bring the lunch so that they get the idea right away that they do have to serve, and it gives them a little bit of responsibility. They don't have to help make the coffee. All they have to do is, when the class is over, go down and help serve and help pour the coffee so it doesn't interfere with their dancing. Uh, we do have a demonstration square, like Clarice had mentioned. We also start dressing from day one and all the angels that help the demonstration square or you know wear dresses otherwise I don't let them uh, be in the demonstration square it's my responsibility to uh, obtain that demo square square also um, to help throughout the floor if there's any problems or somebody gets has hurt feelings to try to smooth them over to remember that hey every one of us had to start somewhere and that uh, it's just growing pains. You can't run until you learn how to walk. Uh, we do call the people that are missing, and uh, we try to, anyway, check with the registration. Every year in December, uh, I help the lady that has a score down shop have a resale. And so it's right in her own home. That's where her shop is, and we have the people bring their clothes, have them marked, and I handle the resale part of it, and she has the, handles her own store. So it works out pretty well. They get to see the new clothes plus the old clothes, and sometimes they buy a little bit of each. Uh, we do, for the uh, lady that uh, mentioned how do you get to the dancers about some of the problem areas like bad breath, um, deodorant, we make made up posters 
Uh, we have an artist in our group from some of these square dance magazines. You see the eating of the garlic, and we hang them around uh, for approximately six weeks. And then Alan also mentions de the deodorant check when they do the star through. And so there's lots of ways like that that you can do to, to help. Uh, but mostly we have a real, real good working relationship with the club. The only thing we don't like is they say 20 lessons and that's it. And sometimes they, they're trying to get the people into the clubs, but now they're changing that. They're finally discovering that, hey, we're losing too many dropouts. We had to, uh, we brought that to their attention. And I think this next year they're going to start with 25 lessons and they're going to really work with the callers. But the, you know, the club does help out a lot in our area. Very good. Thank you. Bev? Bev Graham, Santa Rosa, California. We too are a... Uh, Course, and you know, that's what has happened. But the club is there to get all the work, which makes it, we have found, to be very successful. The, the new class members really, really like coming in, and we have our class in a school, so we have the kitchen area that we can use as kind of a little storeroom, and they can come in, and I kind of head this up. Although I find the other gals are all right there wanting to participate and be a part of it also. We, um, do wear our club dresses. We wear our square dance classes for the very first night of our uh, class night. And we find that the girls really do enjoy seeing the dresses. They're kind of scared at first, and they, like you say, the petticoats, but they really do enjoy the anticipation. And we do find by having the used clothing there that they can get started a lot sooner than if they had to go buy a dress. We have our, our class and our club intermingled an awful lot, although they're not on the same night. They uh, they come and they dance with our beginners class. They go out to pizza with them afterwards. We have several nights during the school year that we cannot get to school when we have them come over and dance with us on a regular club night. And this gives them a chance to really intermingle with the club members. And that has been very successful. We have done something since, well, since I have been involved in the square dance class. As far as getting over the idea of the etiquette, and we found it to be a lot of fun. Our club members enjoy being a part of it, and that is putting on a skit with one uh, square of regular dancers, and they all have the large badges about the size of a recipe card that they wear. And um, I've tried to remember some of the names. We have Bossy Betty, Sexy Susie, and of course they're all dressed to play the part. Lazy Linda, who's forgotten her petticoat and her pantyhose. Talky Tilly, she's the one that's always trying to teach everyone in the square. And, of course, Buddy Boozer. B.O. Bob. Harry Harry, who is, of course, with a short sleeve shirt with hairy arms. And Rough Robert. And it really illustrates the point. At the same time, they're having fun watching. And um, it's visual. It's something that stays in their mind and they don't forget. And we... We do have a little sheet, like Ann said, that we hand out with this information on it, too. And it's been a lot of fun. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Good idea. That's a good idea. In the back. Karen Saunders, Seattle area. I'd like to go back a step, um, back to the singles. We have two married couple clubs and one singles club. We have one uh, married club. They must have a partner to join the club. They will accept singles into the club. They welcome to come and dance. Um, they don't like an excess of gals because it is a married couple. They advertise for partners only. Um, they try to send them to a singles club. We've got several in the area. Um, we've, well, we've got about four in the greater Seattle area and then on down to Tacoma. Our singles club also advertises partners only. We still get a lot of calls from single gals because there are a lot of them out there that want to take lessons. We have left this up uh, kind of up to the club, but we have drawn a line. The club feels that anyone who wants to take lessons should be entitled to take lessons. Okay, But we leave this up to the, the single guys to be out there to, to furnish partners for these gals if, if they you know, require us to run our class this way. But my husband does not want one single gal taking lessons, sitting out, you know, unless she has to sit out. Um, he does not want them sitting on the sidelines, not learning all of their dance. 
all of their basics because he doesn't feel they're learning when they're sitting. Um, and this is kind of how we've solved it. Um, there's becoming a greater need for single club, square dance clubs, and that might be an answer you know, to some of the areas that don't have any singles clubs. Uh, we also use scales as angels, but they are not new dancers. They are club dancers who know their basics or whatever, you know, the club is dancing, and they want to learn the guy's part for, for better, you know, to, to know more what they're doing. My husband has also started in the last year teaching um, by the definition opposition, okay. Um, so they do know, the gals and guys do know each other's part. He teaches left-hand dancer, right-hand dancer. And this has solved our problem for the singles club. Thank you. I'm Virginia Greer from California, and I have a hint and a question. Our hint is uh, on our, um, we run both caller and class, <coughs> club classes. Um, and years back, my husband, naturally, you have a problem with a wife teaching the husband and the husband teaching the wife and the caller trying to teach also. So we've developed a poem which uh, we use, which takes care of foo-foo powder, alcohol, talking in the square, being a teacher, and explaining that he likes to mix husbands and wives up and not to be offended to begin with. It's placed, it's read the first three nights of class, and we try to explain that if you keep dancing with your husband, you will never meet anyone else, you will never meet another couple, and we have a fun little poem. It is also reproduced and given out, and it kind of laughs like the skit does and does not offend anyone. My question is to anyone and to the board, what type of active role do you play in styling during your class? Good question. Who would like to start? I think Ann knows a lot about styling. We don't go into styling until we feel like the dancers know how to do a right and left through and the basic steps, okay? Then Daryl teaches them, or I do, how to work this skirt. We teach them how to twirl. And we desperately try to discourage this bump, bump, slap, slap, kick mess. I hate it. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> we all do. Go ahead. <laughs> we emphasize that in square dancing, timing is everything. If you are out of position for your next call, you're going to mess up three other couples. We have members in our club that do it. They, I, where they picked it up, I do not know. We didn't teach it. I don't know who starts this. I'd like to find out. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but basically, we, I try to teach by example. I dance. When I dance, I work my skirt. I do back-to-back dust of does. Uh, I, if I am dancing with a man and he is jerking me around, you can gentle him down. Usually it's just nerves. And all you have to do is just kind of take him and hold him a little, hold his hands a little tight and slow down, get him dancing to the beat of the music. And then when the tip's over, I'll show him how to swing and tell him to dance on the beat of the music. Don't clippity-clop, slide your feet. And Daryl emphasizes, slide your feet to the beat of the music. I'm, I'm sorry, that's all we do. We don't have a, a big thing we do on styling, but we do. Daryl says over the mic, please don't bump kick. Clarice? Um, I might add to that. We didn't, years ago, we didn't used to worry about styling as much as we do now and have for the last few years. But we've found that if we style each basic as we teach it, uh, show where the hands are supposed to be um, by demonstration and by uh, um, 
talking about it. They learn the styling with the basic and they don't have to relearn how to do something. And uh, we've found it's much more successful. One thing I might say is our class does help our, our angels, whatever you want to call it, with the club. And a lot of times I see them on the floor uh, with the class doing this uh, slap hands and and wrong way twirl and it really confuses. We had one guy that thought that a Hungarian dosa do was the way you were supposed to do it. And so now we tell our club members, our angels, to please dance with style. If you want to do this at another dance, okay, we can't stop you. We can't make you quit. But don't teach it to our new dancers. Okay. All right. In our club, um, of course, you know that Jim Mayo is very hip on styling, and he wants it done right and smooth. And we do a visual teach. Usually uh, when he's teaching a new basic, he and myself and one of the club coordinators that are running the class will do a visual walkthrough on the call that he's going to teach. Because once they start learning it and they start it wrong, they're going to do it all the time. And he has found that it really works with hand turns and various uh, new calls to do it visually, that they see it, they see where your arms, they know the position of it, and it's, he has found that it works quite well before they get the bad habits. They're going to get the bad habits anyway once they go out. You can see that. But if they're t you know, they can visually see the right way in the beginning, he's found it to be quite helpful. I had a question down there. Yeah, Gail Caesar from Northridge, California. And I'd like to just mention something about variety during class. And we have been very successful even six weeks into the class to start contras and quadrilles. And it really helps with their timing and it gives them a, some, you know, something different to do. And I was just wondering how many do use their contras and quadrilles during class time? Out of about 130, there were about 10 people that raised the hand that they do. Beth McLaughlin from Brisbane, Australia. I've noticed with interest the number of people who have been sort of asking how they get their clubs to mix. Yesterday I said we do a roundup. Um, maybe I didn't explain it well, and I could have put a few people off by calling it a stampede. Uh, <laughs> the only time it becomes a stampede is at our combined dances where, it, where there are a lot of single women who like to dance. At our clubs, they work exceptionally well. Our club night is divided up into three sections. We have a general roundup, a couple roundup, and our square ups. A general roundup, we have a line of ladies and a line of men. They link elbows and go, or come up to the centre, link elbows and go down to the middle, which means that we are totally mixing. We're not dancing with our partner all night uh, in a couple round, and we're also mixing with everyone in our squares. In a couple roundup, a couple walks up and forms and means we get three different couples in a square. Um, if people want to dance with their group of friends, then they have the opportunity in our square ups. But we find that this is exceptionally good and we start it right from the beginning in our classes because we then find that couples aren't relying on each other to get through their movements. They're able to sort of dance with themselves and I think it gives them more of a, um, you know, the fact that gee, I better do this properly or learn it properly because if I don't, I'm going to break the square down and we can, you know, they get more uh, self-reliant on themselves, not relying on their partners. Um, one comment on what she said. I attended a beginner class in your area and I found just by watching it, the way you got the people mixed, that they were much more willing to do it than most of our beginners, at least in our New England area, our beginners come to our classes and they really want to stay with their partner all night. They really don't like to be mixed up. We try mixing them up just to sort of ease the tension. But we get a lot of uh, requests not to do that. And some people get very unhappy about it. But I did notice in your area, um, just from being there, I think we were there two nights to see different classes, and, and they seem to enjoy being mixed up. Now, I don't know why that is the difference. It, probably the way they've been taught and they just enjoy it. Probably because here in the States most of your dances are square ups. We do find that couples don't like to break up 
Um, and if that's the case, you'll find that they start the roundups. Thank you. Um, I think she was first. <laughs> I'm Carol Summers from Fairbanks, Alaska, and I've just got one question. We have a problem with students being children. We do not have a teenage group because we're too small and there aren't that many, but we do have uh, kids that want to dance. And we're finding that our adult dancers, students, do not want to dance with them because of height problems as well as because they like to show off. I'd like to get some ideas of how we could control some of the children in our classes and if there were certain things that we could do to make it a little more interesting for them as well as for the adult dancers. Okay. Teenagers, teenage clubs? We have at one time had a large number of teenagers. We do accept children into our sport dance club. We build it as a family activity. Why not let it be a family activity? Uh, what we do is we suggest that the children dance in their own square, learn in their own square. If adults want to join in, they can, but the children do not go join in an adult square. But it, sometimes it makes it hard if you do not have a square of children. Our age limit is 10, and that's young, I realize. But we do have people with young children that are capable of learning to dance, and they really want to. And, and they, they really do learn very fast. Mm -hmm. So we find that we have people that don't want to dance with them. Fine, they don't have to. And we find people that enjoy dancing with them because they enjoy the enthusiasm. Is yours an answer to the question? Yeah. Teenagers, fine, go ahead. Uh, Dorothy McAllister, Davenport, Iowa. And we have teenagers that dance in our, at our classes and at our dances. And what I tell them the very first night that they're there is you get in the square first. And if anybody joins you, they want to dance with you. If they don't want to dance with you, then they won't get in your square. And that way then there's no problem. So this is why they get up first and then they can be joined. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I do with them is I have, besides the contras and the mixers and the easy rounds, we have line dances. Now the older people like to rest between tips, but a lot of the younger couples and the kids like to get out and do lines. And so I start with Alley Cat, Amos Moses, Jiffy Mix, you know, the jive talking. Mm -hmm. uh, we advance to Elvira, all those. And so the kids can get out and really show off. I mean, it gives them a chance to, instead of out running in the halls and causing trouble in the school, we have them right in there with me, and we do these line dances and things to keep them out of trouble. Oh, very good. Clarice, you had some input on that? Um, I agree pretty much with Anne. We have um, teens and uh, about sixth grade up, a few. But we, all, we always insist that parents must be at the classes with their youngsters. Mm -hmm. We will not take a student if the parent is not willing to come to classes because we do not feel the discipline is up to us. Irene Roth, Mandan, and we do about the same thing as Clarice just mentioned. We Our age limit is nine. The parents have to be responsible for their children. Uh, the children dance in their own square. We, one thing we have noticed, the dropout is uh, is really great we don't keep them but at least we keep the parents and so we've gained in that sense of the role another comment I had on the styling uh, if any of you have the opportunity when they're when they're having caller sessions or a caller's workshop in your area instead of having the caller's wives and the other callers doing the dancing ask your local dancers to come in this is something that's really helped in our area they didn't you know we tell them what the styling points are but when they hear other callers saying the same thing, it makes a big dent. And it's, we've gained a lot of ground in that area by having our local dancers help when we have callers workshops. Thank you. Norma? Norma Dagan Titch from California. And um, we have a caller run class. <clears throat> and we feel that one responsibility we have is to inform these dancers about the square dance world. They really don't know what the square dance world is. They, we're teaching them to dance. But there are many, many other aspects. Our association provides us with a booklet that includes such things as what is a square dance club, what is a hoedown, what is a party night, uh, what is proper attire. So we pass these out about halfway through, and then one evening 
we actually do a seminar. We dance a couple of tips, and then we sit down. They have a lot of questions, and between tips, you just can't answer them. So we take some time to just sit down and answer questions and give some direction this way, which we feel is very important. Thank you. My comment was on way back on okay. whenever we were mixing, you were talking about mm -hmm. in the area. I've had a very good example of this that is definitely due to the area in which you start dancing. When we started dancing in Europe, we had a lot of singles. However, at that time and over there, we had more men than we did single ladies which was terrific <laughs> because uh, of the single being over there, you know, within the service. So this is, did not present a large problem because we had the school teachers, and then they, that way we got a lot of participation. Well, in that type of atmosphere, the married partners would also mix up, too. So they were used to dancing with someone other than their partner and then also when Jim finds someone really depending on his or, or her partner he will mix them up on purpose sometimes not on purpose <laughs> but that does keep them mixed up so the next place that I danced a whole lot with Jim Calling was in Oklahoma and there people dance with their partner sometimes and then a lot of times they also dance with other people so you never have any problems with getting your people mixing therefore the singles are more readily accepted because they don't stick out because people are used to dancing with someone other than their own partner now two years ago we went to the St. Louis area which is absolutely the opposite and I would venture to say there are not ten couples in the whole St. Louis area that dances with anyone other than their partner the whole evening which is a little bit of a problem with a partner caller's wife who loves to dance uh, now that they know I like to dance when we go, I very rarely sit out very much. And it came as a surprise to some of them that I did enjoy dancing. I, especially in St. Louis, like to dance because I feel that I can... A, people will come up and speak to Jim when they will not come up and talk to me if I'm sitting on the sideline. So I feel that I have met more people by dancing in the square and getting to know new people in a new area in that manner, especially since I do love to dance. But if you want them to start mixing with other couples and with other partners, if you start it, you know, in the very beginning at their lessons, well, then that is easy. Another person has had so many single ladies want to dance that they have started an all-ladies club in St. Louis. I do not know how it has come out. I have not attended. We have found that when Jim was teaching in the university in Lawton, Oklahoma, we had a, a PE course. We had many more ladies, girls, and they danced the boys' part, and they had a very good time. I made little bibs like they do the numbers, and the person who was dancing the boys' part wore the bib. And it really helped and made a difference, and they really enjoyed it. Very nice. Thank you. Freddie? Uh, Freddie Felton Fowler. Nobody's mentioned something that's active in our area of northern New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and that's class-level dances. The callers council, uh, every, the, all the callers in the council or association agree uh, at about uh, two months into lessons how many basics they will have taught and then they'll have a class level dance a party uh, for all the classes that are being held in the area and it does a lot of neat things like 
showing these isolated clubs and classes that are going on that they are part of a large larger group they aren't just strange people that happen to be square dancing and it does the other thing of getting them used to dancing to a different collar right from the start now every only only two callers or maybe three at the most call at one of these class level dances and after i think the first one is generally in november or it has been uh and then they're once a month so that the the dance the class members are getting used to several things one going out on a sunday afternoon um to a dance in in another area so that they they uh, become accustomed to dancing on other than that special class night and realize that there that square dancing is an ongoing activity and they're dancing to a different voice putting that same basic together in a slightly different way so they don't get perhaps to anticipate and they get make new friends and this is covering rather a large geographical area uh, uh, well, not large compared to the west but um traffic wise and they it it has made some tremendous benefits and does, is this strictly in our area i can't believe it because it's such a super idea our area college association i think it was 2 years ago wasn't it ross began having a sweetheart swing and they com- combined it with the dance for the dancers and for the class we had one tip all the area callers all the members of the callers association uh i think ron ray programmed the callers each tip uh they all called a tip and then started over again they would call one tip for the class members that i think they had to be through the halfway party they called one tip for the class members and then one tip for the regular dancers and then i think they called some that they could dance together with and it worked out real well uh we had gee boss i don't remember do you how many and you Yeah, we had 30 squares of new students at the first one, so we thought it was real successful. How often do you have them in? Uh, once a year. Once a year. Grace, do you have any input from your area? Uh we always invite um the club members to a special party dance about halfway through a similar situation and dance at the class level where they are dancing. and there's no other outside dances for the beginners no okay and i know england area we have well, after the first couple of months that they're into dancing you can go to a beginner dance almost every friday and every saturday night from there on in and um in our areas we say our functions are club run and therefore uh the club coordinators take the new beginners to the dancers so that they they're at least guided where to go and they're not afraid when they go but it keeps them busy um the club works very hard i don't know how it you know if caller run classes and they only have one a year i think that's probably easy at least they're not running around all the time taking the beginners yeah some of the festivals in our area are having rooms now for basic dancers and they are finding that this is very successful also and i think halfway parties come under the heading of places where they can go and dance and there's a halfway party uh most of the time because no one ever starts their classes at the same time and you encourage your dancers and your school dancers your class members to attend the half- other halfway parties so that would also come under the heading of beginner dances Uh we yes we did do that this winter down in the valley and we the dancers are real anxious to go to a party and and get their dresses on because down where we are and a lot of them are in travel trailers they're not wearing square dance dresses during the workshops and the classes but they're anxious to get into those clothes and so we did have a halfway uh a beginners ball and instead of having different callers at ours what we did was we kind of lined it up so that one night one week they had uh one with Jerry and the next week they had one with Gary and the next week they that way they got to go more nights <laughs> and they loved it very good uh in in Iowa 
We have the Callers Association in the Quinn Cities, and in September about all of our classes start. So in January we start what we call freshman dances. And so the first one is in January, and all the callers that are available that night call at it so that the dancers, and they're not required to dress in costume, just in slacks or casual. And then in February we have one, then in March. But starting in February, then the classes, I mean the clubs, take over, and they have them if they want to. And so then that way they, they get a lot more chance to dance. Uh, there was some other things that I wanted, a hint that I thought might help somebody. Do you have to throw away a lot of coffee? In our area, we've come up with the idea yes. that all we do is put on hot water, and then beside it is instant coffee, tea, and hot chocolate. So anybody during the night that wants something hot can come up and choose, and you don't have to throw away all the coffee at the end of the dance. And another thing that, that might be of interest was in our class this year, in one of our classes, uh, we had a couple show up, and they were older. And we thought now, you know, we all night long tried to figure out what, which one was a boy or what it was. It ended up being two ladies, uh, both old maids, and one of them dressed the boy's part and one dressed the girl's part, and that's how they danced. And the one preferred to dance the boy's part, so they lived together, they're sisters, and, and that's how they do it. But it was so funny because the one sister wanted to be called Charlie. So on her name bag, we just, badge, I put just Charlie. And it worked out really well. Are they still dancing? Yes. And they go out and do all kinds of demonstrations with older groups and hospitals, and, and uh, it, it's really nice. And then another thing was that uh, somewhere in some magazine, I found the Ten Commandments of score dancing. And this encompasses all the things we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And so we put this on a poster board and display it at the classes. And so they kind of read through it, and they get the hint from that. Very good. Thank you. I'm Jody Baldwin from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and in our area we have student hoedowns which have been very successful. They are sponsored by any caller or any club and usually advertised as perhaps a 10 lesson level, 15 lesson level, or what, whatever the caller for that night intends, and it gives the students an idea of what they can expect when they get there, and they learn to mix and have the fun that you have at a general square dance. Tell us how from San Bruno, California. Now I know how the callers felt yesterday. I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> uh, as uh, suggestions maybe to help with the uh, newer dancers uh, within the club bars is a club run situation. And we have uh, a liaison. We have two couples. And they come in and they set up all of the situations for the newer dancers for the beginning nights. So many couples must be there every night. Uh, they try three couples. If you have three couples that way, if there's a couple sitting out, you'll always have a square uh, because if one is sitting out, they're never going to learn that particular figure that's being taught. So we, we really try to encourage three couples to come and help, plus as many others that will, but at least three. Uh, this caller liaison situation that we have, um, they do not wish to have dancers go to the caller with complaints of any kind. They discuss it among themselves. They encourage the dancers to come to these particular two couples and say, uh, gee, I'm having a hard time because of whatever it is, sound, uh, anything, anything at all. Uh, we have a meeting. Uh, they come either to our home and we have coffee, cake. We go to someone else, uh, one of the other two couples' homes. And what they do is they sit and they talk. And they say, okay, Dale, uh, this is what we're hearing from our dancers. Uh, this is what they are complaining about. This is what they'd like to get from you. What do you have, too, that you would like to come back to them? And they work it together that way. Um, another thing that they do is uh, we have what we call our caller's mailbox. It is a box that sets on the stage. Uh, if there are certain figures that the dancers are having problems with, they write that figure down so that Dale, the following week, will have that figure notation down and they'll say, okay, we're having problems with such and such. We're going to review that particular one tonight. Another thing he does is he encourages them to put their hand up at any time and say, wait a minute, I didn't get that particular figure. Uh, there are those that are very willing to put their hand up. Some of them are scared to death. That's where the mailbox comes in handy because those that will not put their hand up will write it on a piece of paper. And then there's the suggestions. This way he knows what the dancers are really struggling on. Otherwise, there are some that are just scared to death and they'll never let you know what they're falling down on. The other thing that we have um, 
as a complaint when you said the kicking and the jumping and all of this type of thing. We've had our dancers, when we encourage them to go out to the newer dancers' hoedowns and party nights, they come back and they say, gee, we were in a square with two couples of what they call older dancers, regular dancers. They were cutting up. They were cutting across the squares. When I saw them take off across there, I thought maybe I was doing something wrong within the figure. I think that's where your biggest problem comes in, is your regular dancers. They forget. They get out and they have an awful good time, which is great. But they're sure scaring the devil out of those newer dancers that think, gee, maybe that's a figure that I didn't really learn properly. They're doing it right and I'm doing it wrong. Another thing that we have in our area that we find very, very beneficial is what call, it's called Golden Doors for Newer Dancers. This is sponsored by our Dancers Association. We have uh, four callers who take uh, four figures or eight figures, whatever the time allows. They work on those specific figures from every um, position and uh, teach these to the dancers before what we call our graduation time, which is generally in May. Um, this is like a great big hoedown. We have as many as 90 to 100 squares that have attended, and that has been a big help. Another thing that we um, have... I'm going to have to cut your shot because we have to keep...